as you can see I finally ditched the old uh, headphones that I was using uh, and I'm using this lavalier microphone now so I hope the audio quality will be a little bit better uh, and I don't have to hassle with the headphones carrying around um, those big lamps all day but uh, whatever let's get started Hey what is up guys and welcome to yet another 3D pilot video. In my last couple of videos I talked about textures and how you can use uh, textures, the different kinds of textures, diffuse, roughness and normal maps to make photorealistic materials. But the question remains, where do you find these textures? There's a couple of sources, a couple of places where you can get them from. Uh, we're just gonna go through them. So the first easiest and actually the best way to do it is to go look online to a website that makes professional good-looking uh, 2D textures for using in 3D applications. There's a couple good ones in the description. Um, I would definitely recommend Polygon, uh, which has a free trial as well of uh, 30 days and you can download a bunch of textures and use those later if you want. There's also the Cycles Material Vault, there's the Substance Source, there's Unity Asset Store, there's GameTextures.com, Textures.com and there's a bunch more you can just have a look online. Uh, and these are professional websites and they offer you all textures that you need. So of every material you will find a diffuse, just the basic color, but a roughness map, a normal map, and even some metalness maps and some others as well. So that's a great source, but of course these mostly come at a price uh, and sometimes they're not that cheap. And of course most of my audience is students, so we're not gonna be looking at the paid ones. Uh, but as I said, the Polygon one has a couple of free ones which are great to use. Um, and in the Cycles Material Vault as well, you can download free packets sometimes. So uh, it's worth checking out. Now you can find some materials on there, but not all materials. Uh, sometimes you need a specialty material. For example, I was making a smoothie machine once and I needed a uh, texture that looked like fruit, like a bunch of fruit piled up, frozen fruit. So that wasn't easy to, um, to find online. But I just took a photo from internet uh, and then made a texture out of that. So I'll be showing you how to do that in a minute. So just on Google Images, you can find a lot of great textures. Now there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Do take textures that are of good enough resolution. So I'd recommend a thousand by a thousand pixels for most kind of textures. Uh, depends on what you're gonna use it for. Beware of watermarks, of course, because uh, one, two, three RF and uh, Shutterstock and the uh, Getty images, there's a bunch of textures that have watermarks on them. So you don't wanna use those. You could remove those in Photoshop, but I really wouldn't recommend that. And thirdly, you should check for for seamlessness. So a seamless texture is a texture that you can um, copy a bunch of a bunch of times next to each other uh, and you can't really see the edges of the of the images. Yeah you just have this little demo. Um, of course you can go shoot them uh, yourself if you have a camera if you've got some lights you can make a texture. Um, you, sometimes you might have to use this for uh, if you're making special fabrics for example if you make a, a really special type of surface finish if you want a print on something that you found online uh, you can use the online version, but if you want to copy a print that you found on, on an actual object, you can use that. Um, but of course, you don't have a seamless image if you do this. So real quick, I want to show you how you make an image that you find online or shot yourself, how you make that image seamless in Photoshop. All right, so we're actually going to work on this uh, pomegranate texture. Pomegranate seed texture, don't ask me why I chose this one. But it's just a good texture to work on. It's fairly uniform. Uh, hasn't got too much um, really obvious repeating spots. So yeah, we're just gonna make this seamless at first. So uh, the first thing is to go into filter, other, and then do an offset. And this will actually shift the image uh, a little bit upward or downward, depending on the values that you choose here, um, and bring the rest of the image um, underneath it or above it. So you can actually change this, this value and see how the texture um, is wrapped around this original form. So um, to begin, I'm gonna have the cross um, the crossing of the two edges in the middle. Select OK. Uh, you also don't need this layer to be locked, so I'll unlock that. Uh, and I'll be using the clone stamp brush, uh, clone stamp tool. So now you can just um, sample from anywhere in the texture, for example, uh, here, and then just paste this texture over where you need it to be. Now I'm gonna do a really rough job. Uh, you don't. You can go into this as, as as finely detailed as you want, but I found that most of the time you don't really need to, uh, and, and textures look just fine as they are. Uh, do be careful to not go into the edges, uh, to sample of the edges here, because you can see that edge appearing over here. So uh, always try to sample from an area that hasn't got any edges nearby. Select that and um, just brush that over real gently. So just continue doing that, uh, not all the way until the edges. You can leave the edges as they are. Um, we'll, we'll come around to those later. We just keep keep selecting uh, different spots to, to sample from uh, using Alt and then 
click where you want to uh, sample from, for example this seed, and then just paint that seed over somewhere else. Uh, have a look at areas that look a little bit strange, like for example here the, the seeds are blending over each other, so I'll take some really clear seeds and post those, <coughs> excuse me, paste those over the top. So that looks fine. Um, we're going to repeat the offset again for these uh, final edges, the, these edges at the top. So just go to Filter, Offset, uh, and have a look at where the sharp edges were. So as you can see, I've got one of them uh, lining up over here. So we're going to select OK, select the clone stamp, uh, sample from an area, and then just paste that over. Uh, and I actually can't seem to find the horizontal line. I think it's over here somewhere. Uh, and I see a little cross over here, so I'm going to delete that little cross like this. Uh, and also the edge here looks a little bit strange, so I'm going to paint that over. So there you go, that looks quite fine. I'm going to do one last offset to have a look if the whole texture is seamless. And I can't seem to find the edges that quickly, so it's probably almost okay. <clears throat> so you can just hit OK and we've got a seamless texture. There you go, it's really that simple. Um, this texture isn't squared, uh, squared, while this is actually advised, so you can always select the um, rectangle select and then just draw a perfect square over there and uh, crop the image before you do the, um, the uh, seamless making with the offset filter. Uh, but you don't really have to do that, just to be careful when you unwrap your model. Just be careful when you unwrap your model that your scale is correct across the whole uh, UV map. So yeah, that's it basically. So now we have our seamless texture. Now this is great for the color. You must, most of the time you make a just a diffuse texture. But for a realistic material, we need the other maps as well. We need a diffuse map um, as well as a roughness map and a normal map. You can do that in software like Crazy Bump, which is a great software. You can just plug in your diffuse texture and it'll generate those other maps uh, for you. But we're actually going to do this in Photoshop because Crazy Bump has a, uh, a trial limit of 30 days and that's not really a good free alternative on the market right now. So let's just head into Photoshop and have a look at it over there. So we can already save this out as our diffuse texture. So I'll do that uh, real quick. You can use uh, PNG or JPEGs, but I like to use uh, PNG as they haven't got any compression. I'm just going to save that on the um, on the desktop here. And we're going to name it uh, seed, Seeds Diff from Diffuse. So save that out. Uh, medium file size, that's fine. Um, next thing we're going to do is make a normal map out of this. Um, and this is actually quite easy in Photoshop. I'm just going to wait until the saving is done. There you go. Duplicate this layer by selecting Alt and then uh, dragging the layer on top of itself. Um, go to Filter, 3D and make Normal Map. Generate Normal Map. Well, that, that's a really simple functionality that you've got in Photoshop to make a normal map out of the blue. It's not perfect, it's not photorealistic. Uh, it's nowhere near the accurateness of the normal maps generated by uh, the Polygon crew, for example. But you can actually have a little preview and, and see what the normal map will look like without any color. And I think this looks quite fine. Um, you can change the parameters over here, for example the blur maybe a little bit, to have a little bit less of the, the fine fine detail. But in my opinion it, it looks fine just the way it is. So hit OK and you can save this one out as the normal map. So again, we go to PNG, um, not seeds diff from diffuse, but I'm going to say NRM for normal. Save that out just as we did before. There we go. Uh, and now we're going to make the roughness map. Now looking at the original texture, you can see that these seeds are really wet, uh, really wet and really shiny. And this basically means that they will not be very rough. The reflection will be very sharp. So um, the sharp reflection means that the roughness is very low and a very low value is represented by black. So this, this roughness uh, map will be pretty much all black. Um, but anyway, I'm going to make it to make just a little bit of variety in there. It's not really necessary uh, for all textures, like for example a wood. If you've got a natural looking wood, then um, it's best to use the roughness map to, to have the different roughnesses across the, the different um, directions of grain in your model, in, in, in your wood actually. But if you've got a painted wood, for example, the paint just lays, um, lays across one clear roughness, one um, roughness that, that's the same across the whole model. So that's basically just a, a grayish texture that you would use or just a value slider in the principal shader. But anyway, to make a roughness map, I'm going to duplicate this layer again. 
first thing is I'm going to set it to um, black and white. Now these seats uh, seem really seem really white, uh, with the back of the seats seem really um, dark. And this actually is not really needed because they are pretty much the same roughness. So under the reds here, I'm going to turn that up a little bit until that's pretty much the same. There we go. Uh, and now it's just basically playing with the levels that you've got. Uh, right now we've got this. This is this is basically the the. Um, well, it's not really up to me to do the explanation, but as I said, you need need a really dark dark texture for your roughness. So you can actually select these sliders and slide them all the way down, or select this middle one until we've got a texture that is mostly dark with a little bit of spots um, uh, right around where the roughness might be a little bit higher. So. Um, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to set the output levels between black, so perfectly, um, oh, that's another message, perfectly black, uh, perfectly shiny, and a little bit less shiny, and then just have the detail in there um, accordingly. As I said, it's not really important to do this. Uh, you can barely see the texture, actually. But anyway, you can still do this uh, for, other one, for other textures. As I said, you can do this in Crazy Bump, which is a lot easier. But um, anyway, save this out as a roughness map. So that's, um, I like to use R, oh, there we go, RHG for roughness, uh, roughness, RGH, there we go, see it's roughness. And there we go. Now, just as I did in the last tutorial, I'm going to apply this to our little 3D model in the EV preview. So there we go. And there we go. We've got this nice 3D material that looks like a bunch of uh, pomegranate seeds. So you can do this to any uh, any texture that you find online. Basically, just main, uh, make sure that you've got enough resolution, no watermarks, and uh, don't forget to make the texture seamless. Um, just as an example, I'm going to show you how it looks when I didn't make the texture seamless. I'm going to take the original one that wasn't seamless and open that one up for the color, and then just now have a look at the roughness and the normal for a moment. And there you go, we've got the texture, but you can see there's really sharp lines uh, going through our model. So that doesn't look very natural, whereas if we use the um, seamless version that we made in Photoshop, there we go, no sharp lines anywhere. If you've got a good uh, UV unwrap, of course. So there we go, that's how the texture applied. And of course, you can go back into Cycles. <clears throat> and have a look at the material in cycles. Right now the UV map is a little bit distorted as I can see. Uh, I scaled up the UV map but that's not working correctly but you can still see that the material works fine in cycles as well as EV as well in as well as in other rendering engines that you might be using. There we go. Alright, so now we have these textures. You can plug these in into the principal shader like I showed you in the last episode or use them wherever you want. Uh, SolidWorks also uses the fuse and normal map so you can plug it in over there. I don't think that's really a way to implement the roughness map. Um, but of course that's just a really basic software so you can't really make that complicated materials in it um, that you can in, in cycles or in EV that I showed you last time. Now, if you want to get really advanced, you can go into Substance Painter, for example, which is used for game assets, for example, for uh, textures that go on guns. Because, for example, when a player has a gun in their hand, it's made up of different textures, different metals, uh, with rust on them, with worn edges, and with drips running down, and maybe some blood and some scratches in certain places, but not everywhere. So, you can go into really advanced materials. Um, I would definitely recommend Substance Painter. You can have a free demo of that as well uh, as a student. So that's a great way, um, a great way of making really realistic materials for a certain object but you spend a lot of time on it so that's why these tutorials focus on just one main material for your object uh, or, or a couple of materials that you can use to um, to apply on one object i'm thinking woods corks uh, ecological materials or things that you would use in product design because of course that's my background that's just basically how you get textures uh, online how you shoot them where you can find good ones uh, what's the bad ones 
and, and so forth. This actually concludes my material series. So I hope you can go with confidence into cycles, uh, have a look at the principal shader, uh, apply some materials after the UV unwrapping, of course. Just play with it, really. I, I really like, I really enjoy making materials. You can adjust a bunch of settings. You can make things that look really realistic, really interesting, really fast. So it's definitely worth checking out PBR materials uh, like I was working with here in this series. So yeah, I really want to thank you for watching my series. Um, I was just going to continue with the other tutorials uh, as normal now, maybe some only quicks. If you've got any special questions, any um, suggestions of tutorials that you You'd like to see definitely post them on the facebook page or in the comments below and yeah whatever you're doing i wish you the best of luck and i hope your new year's resolutions are coming along well so yeah i'll see you in the next episode goodbye